Where is the young lady? Uh, oh, here she sits. Come. Yes, I believe. The word says, when the miraculous works in your body, in your life, we must talk about it. We must talk about it. We must testify. So I'm going to give this young lady a chance to testify. Can you see this young lady? Yes. First, before I do that, can you hold my mic set up here? And then it's long past time. Um, I was standing there praying, and I was just asking the Father about you, and what can I say? Is there something? Is there a word? And again, I, I received one personal word, which I will give now, and I received a corporate word. And, and the Lord is saying, if you are awake, not meaning sleeping, awake. If you are awake, you will have a promotion tonight. A step up. A step up in your life. So be awake. Open your ears. And then a personal... Uh, yes. A personal word for you. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what um, the other say, um, in the world you will call it a lucky break. You got a lucky break. And I said, Dad, um, what do you mean? Is it a breakthrough? He says, no. Just tell him, a lucky break. So I don't know, just that's your word. It's a lucky break for you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm excited with you. Awesome. Okay, so the Holy Spirit said, someone with the right knee, come, if you have enough faith and react and um, be obedient, you will come, which you did. And our Father is a rewarder of obedience. Testify. Nee, toe, my gisterhand um, praat van iemand by die rechterknie, toe weet ek, ek sikkel nou al vir meer as die jaar met my rechterknie, ek, ek het om die seer gemaakt, het net van self seer geword. En toe denk ek, my is baie mens, en elke net die rechterknie, so ek gaan nie opstaan nie, daak is al iemand anders. <laughs> en toe ek bles sit, toe denk ek, nee, maar hier staan nou nou niemand op, so dit is seker ek, ek gaan nou maar opstaan. En ek het daar uitgestap, en rarig waar die, die seer, wat altyd daar binnen was, is beter, hy is nog heel toemal recht, hy het vandag net so even sy lammerige, branderige sensatie gehad, maar niks seer nie, maar ek het van ek gestrand die weg gereid het, en vandag heel dag by die huis, so ver, soos het ek werk of iets doen, sê ek nie, dankie heren, dankie heren, want ek weet, as hy nou nog hier recht, heel toemal recht is, hy sal heel toemal recht kom, en ek geloo dit. Dankie, dankie. Ain't that awesome? That's our father. That's our dad. Okay. Uh, Tian, I'm going to start with that last picture uh, of yesterday. So, we're going to work through tonight how God made you. He made you a physical person. And inside of that physical person is a soul. And also inside that flesh box of yours is a spirit man. So you are made of these three. All of you. All of us. Were made like that. Okay? And we need to understand the function of each. So that you can understand how your life works. So you can understand how you must operate in the spiritual and in the physical. So last night we said there are how many worlds? Two worlds. The one is a spiritual world, the one on top uh, that shows on top and the one at the bottom which is the physical, this world. And we also said 
that the two are one. You are not walking into and walking outside of these worlds. They are happening at the same time as we speak. Okay? That, is, that needs a big mindset change because we only see physically, hear physically, taste, etc. Physically, right? We need to change that. Because last night we saw that the moment you become reborn, you become a new creation. Remember? 1 Corinthians 2, 17. A new creation. And we took the example of the two people, which means totally different. And the second one, the one that was born, we said was born from above. Was born by the word of God. We covered all the verses, remember. Okay. Which means... You now have a choice. You either sit in this world doing your thing and when the problem comes you look at the kingdom of God where all the miracles should come from. You tap in there in what way you find this space. Then you work the problem. Or you realize what happened in your life, that you were taken from this place of darkness and pulled into his marvelous light, which is in the spirit spiritual realm. So your address could be from there, looking at earth, looking at the physical. And when the problem comes, it's easy to sort out because Everywhere around you is just solutions. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. But you need to change it in your head. You see, we covered that last night. We're going to jump into some more detail of that. So, it's important. Again, I'm calling you leaders. It's important for a leader to operate from that place. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult to lead, slash impossible. So, we need to understand the kingdom of God, where you were born into, and where you're at, at this moment. Not when you go to church, or sit in a holy place. No, this is where you are. Jesus said, don't look. In the valley or on the mountains, the kingdom of God is inside of you. So you are part of this dispensation, right? Okay. Romans 8 talks about something extremely important for the end times. And I'm in Romans 8 verse 14, which says, And all those who are guided by the Spirit, and that is the Spirit of God, are sons of God. I'm sure all of you know that verse. You see, this can be an awesome verse applicable to you. But are you guided by the Spirit? Is the first question. Are you in this place that is the spiritual place, the kingdom of God? Are you there with your mind? Can you hear the Holy Spirit? If you can say yes to all, then there is a good chance that you can operate in the Spirit. And then the word says those who are guided by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Why do you want to be a son of God? Okay. You want to be a son of God because at the times of end, which is now, the Bible says that the whole creation, not people, not nations, the whole creation, even this example of a plant, even this, Sorry, Leanne. Pass, Leanne. 
Yes, ek krij nie koos vanavond. He. Even this. Yes. Even this. The whole creation is in anticipation. The Amplified says, in a moaning and a groaning for something to happen. For the manifestation of the sons of God. What does that mean? That means everything is waiting for sons of God to operate. Why? Let's track back. Those who walk in the Spirit. Why them? If you walk in the Spirit, everything's possible. That's what the Word says. And the creation needs to be sorted out by those kind of people. The sons. Which means, it doesn't, listen carefully to what I'm telling you now. This is a harsh statement. It doesn't mean that if you sit in church Sunday by Sunday, that you are a son of God. No. The word says, those who walk in the spirit. Be careful. Let's continue. Verse 15. For you did not get the spirit of servants again to put you in fear. But the spirit of sons was given to you. Was given to you. It didn't say you were made sons. You received the spirit of sons. When you got reborn, remember, we covered this last night. When you got reborn, the spirit of God came into you, right? So the spirit of sons was put inside of you, all of us. By which we can say, Abba, Father. That was the reconciliation part where we, are, we became children of God. And whereby we got the right to say, my father. Listen. I sat days on that phrase. My father. It's too big for my head. If you really push into those words. If you really meditate. If you really swim in it. You will know what I'm talking about. My father. So, verse 16 says, The spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, that is God's spirit, is witness with my spirit that we are children of God. Okay, so there's a witness to that. A very credible witness. A question. So the verse says, the spirit witness with our spirit that we are children of God. We are children of God. Question. Is Jesus a child of God? Why are you so slow? Is Jesus a child of God? Yes, of course he is. He's the son of God also. But is he a child of God? Yes, he is. He's a child of God. I'm a child of God. What does that make us? Mm-hmm. I like that. Just checking. Verse 17. And if we are children, we have a right to a part in the heritage, a part in the things of God, together with Christ, so that if we have a part in His pain, we will in the same way have a part in His glory. Okay. There's a promise for us. Now this is the thing. To be a part, to have a part, you need to be and understand the spirit man. Let's get to that. Last night, uh, last night amazing things happened. And that opened up a lot of questions. And it also continued today when we spoke about speaking in tongues. Yes, I'm going to talk about these things. It's important. No, it's crucially important. So we cannot not talk about things that's in the Bible. We have to talk about it. Right, okay. So what happened? People said, I want to take the next step. 
What's the next step? Are you reborn? I'm reborn. Step taken. Next step, receive the Holy Spirit. Water baptism. Three steps. It's easy. Now, the signs that follow, like in Luke 16, explained to us, one of the signs would be you will speak in tongues. We will cover it now. There's another part. I'm going to work out of 1 Corinthians 14. So the question was, okay, now I have received this language. By the way, for those of you who are wondering, if you are not speaking in your spiritual language, it's not to say it's not inside of you. In fact, we have received so many things that's already inside of us, but we don't know it. So this has been deposited inside of you when you accept the Holy Spirit. That's the signs that will form part of that. Now there's faith involved in this action. Listen, there's faith involved to stand and sing and praise and worship and lift my hands. To lift my hands needs faith. To sow, to follow a biblical principle, to sow and to be obedient to a seed that God says I must sow and then expect a, a, a harvest from that seed is a biblical principle that will happen, but it needs my faith. These biblical principles that works like gravity. Did you see it worked again? I didn't even blink. <laughs> it works every time, believe me. It's the same. When you receive the Holy Spirit, the gift of speaking in tongues is inside of you. Because you receive your communication language to talk to the Father. It's inside of you. So those of you who are in your eyes struggling, it's not a big issue at all. In fact, it's easy to sort out. But you need to understand a few things. It makes it much easier. You see, it's inside of you. Okay. So the question was asked, okay, now I've got this language. Now what? Okay. Let's get to a few answers here. I'm in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. Paul was talking to the people of the church because they asked the same questions. We are not unique. They had the same questions, right? And he was arguing a case about speaking in tongues and when must you do it and when must there be interpretation and what about prophets and things like that. They, uh, he was building a case on that. So I'm in that story. I'm not going to focus about the difference between speaking in tongues and prophets and that. I'm going to tell you the questions that are asked. What must I do now that I have this language? What must I do? Verse 2. For he who makes use of tongues is not talking to men, but to God. Because no one has the sense of what he is saying. You've heard how it sounds when people speak in tongues. So people don't have the sense of what he is saying, right? But in the spirit, he's talking of secret things. It's in your Bible as well. It's not only my Bible. You will see there. Verse 2. You will find it there. Verse 3, but the word of the prophet gives men knowledge and comfort and strength. So now he's talking about the prophets. I'm not going there now. Verse 4, he who makes use of tongues may do good to himself. That's what I want to point out. A another uh, Bible version will say, it, you are edifying yourself. Right? So, example. I'm... I'm waiting for a big meeting to take place. This is an extremely important meeting. I have a desire in my heart for a specific outcome for that meeting. It's got big business. Uh, it is part of my direction, how God wants to use me, and I need a specific outcome. So how do I do this? There are two ways. First, I speak to... Daddy, in my Afrikaans language. 
And then I explain in my heart, and I say, Dad, this is really what I would um, like to see. And you know, at some stage, my, I don't have any more words. I've said what I wanted to say. I've pleaded my case. I've reasoned my case. You can reason with God. Did you know that? You can reason with God. Dad, but what about this? Dad, what about this? Dad? Okay, I'm not going there now. So, tongues. I don't have any more words. I've spoken my heart. And then I edify myself. I stir up my spirit. Because you see, as we will see tonight, you're a spirit man first. The moment you got reborn, in the biology classes, they will tell you that you are a person in real life that has got a soul and a spirit. The moment 2 Corinthians 5.17 happened, this changed around. You became a spirit man first, the real you, the one God made that has got a soul and lives in a body. So I know I'm a, I'm a spirit man first. So I walk into this meeting, edified my spirit man so that when I go in there, I've got the wisdom that I need to say the right words and to conquer. That's how it works. There's faith involved. So you need to believe it. Or if you don't, try your method. It's fine. You'll still go to heaven. Even if you don't speak in your language, you go to heaven. Okay? But you can help yourself a lot. Let's continue. Let's, let's hear what Paul has to say about this. So, Tongues so that it, it can make, uh, do good to yourself. But he who gives the prophet's word does good to the church. Okay, so then he's talking about everyone. The prophetic word came and everyone benefits. Okay. Verse 18. I thank God. Verse 18, right? I skipped a few verses. I thank God that I speak in strange tongues or languages more than any of you all. Put together. Paul understood something about praying in tongues. And he said, all of you, I don't know you, I don't know how many times you speak in tongues, put all of your efforts together. I know I pray more in tongues than all of you put together. Verse 18, in your Bible, look there. He understood something about this. So, he knew this is the way how we tap into communication with the Father. He knew that this is how he talks to the Holy Spirit each time when he, when he has a conversation. He knows it's a secret language. Someone mentioned uh, earlier in one of our sessions, ah, Sorina, she said, uh, uh, also be reminded that this language the devil cannot recognize. It's true. So it's lekker. To talk about him and he didn't even know it. <laughs> and I'm telling the father how I've kicked him in the face today. And I told him how we conquered a knee injury of one year in a moment. And I have this discussion in my heavenly language, in my spiritual language. And it's nice. And it edifies me. You see? I want to again stress the fact there's nothing wrong or you are not bad if you don't speak in your language. Don't go that route. You're going to take offense and that's not the right way to do it. All I'm saying is there's a better way to help yourself. There's a better way to be more effective. There's a better way. That's what I'm saying. It's not my opinion. The word teaches. Right. Let's continue. We're talking about three people. The soul man. No. The spirit man, the soul man, and the body. Right? You are that. 
I am that. So, how does it work in our daily life? With the spirit man, I believe things. This is the part that got reborn, and I believe that I'm reborn, right? And the Holy Spirit lives in me, and this is where, he's, where, where this took place, in my spirit man. And I walk in his, in his power, and that's a done case. So my spirit man is the one that is sorted out, okay? Now the soul man, and we're going to talk a lot about the soul man. So where's the soul man in your flesh box? This one, the thinking one, the brain, where the decisions happen, emotions, woman, woo. You've got lots of soul men. <laughs> okay. Soul men, we're going to talk about, because this is an extremely important part, and I'm going to demonstrate it now what I mean by that. And then, uh, so in the soul man is normally where your revelation shakes, where the doubt happens. So the truth is in your spirit man, word of God. And in the soul man, the doubt happens. Man, can it be? Oh, I'm not too sure. Mm, yeah, maybe. And the body is the one that then reacts on the reaction of the previous two. The body can't make decisions. When a word comes from the spirit man and the soul man decided this is the truth, the healing happened. The healing came immediately. That's how it works. But this part is the decision maker. And we're going to press into that tonight. Right. I always say that your, 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 your thinking, your brain, is the filter system between the two. So, I spoke to you earlier and I said, that's why it's important that we are trained. As a soldier, I have been trained, which means that my, 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 my thinking didn't have much work because the alignment of reaction was immediately because of training. So the spirit man gave through instruction, it went through the brain and the body reacted. It's immediately. How do you get a miracle? When those three bodies of yours when they line up like this. Your spirit man receives the truth. The spirit man cannot receive lies. He receives the truth from the word of God. The soul man makes a decision on that truth. And the body reacts on the information he receives. When you align those three, you have a miracle. That's how it works. So, training plays a big role in this. How do the spirit man and the soul man and the body then work together? How does it work? Okay, let's look at that. So in the spirit man, I receive word, something like, greater is he that is in me than he who is in this world. Or, I am more than an overcomer. Or, you can stack them up, right? That comes to your spirit man. Soul man is the one that needs to exercise faith, needs to exercise hope. What is faith? I see the questions. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is something you hope for, that your eyes cannot see yet, but you do it and are in it as if it is already there. That is faith. So the the soul man then operates in faith about this, what he just heard from spirit man. Spirit man says, wait man, don't fear. Greater is he that is in me than this one that is facing us. Soul man is listening at spirit man. And then he acts into that hope of which he just heard. Body says, what must I do? When? How fast? What? Blah, 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 and he just do it. He's not making any decisions. The instructions came. 
you see. And then the body speaks whatever needs to be spoken physically. So each one is working his part. Each one is working together. You see, the, in this world, in this reality, many people will tell you this is the reality of your world. You can look at it that way. Or you can do as Paul said. Don't look at the things from here. Look at the things from heaven. Because you see, if you realize you're in a different world, you've got a different ad address. Not a physical address, but in the heavenlies. The kingdom of God is inside of you. Then your outlook is different. And then this will not be your reality. Okay, let me give you a bit of higher grade information. Which means, I'm walking, and suddenly I feel a pain in my knee. Which is physical, and in all worldly realities, true. And my reaction, by my default setting is, I feel the pain, and I, the first thing I say, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. So my spirit man is talking to my soul man, where the doubt can happen. And my spirit man is speaking the truth to my soul man. It's a lie. It's a lie. And the reaction of my physical man will be the strongest conviction that comes from the previous two. So if you get your mind organized so that he is disciplined and give the right, uh, right instruction with very to be very convincing, your body will follow on the truth. I'm making it very simple in, the, in this discussion. I'm giving you the principle of where your address should be. And that this physical world must not be your reality. Change your mind on that. Change your mind. We cannot fight the physical with... Um, we cannot fight physical and spiritual for that matter with physical tools. We need to sort it out with spiritual tools. We'll get to that. So, your physical body is the one that's on earth here, but your soul man and your spirit man is part of a bigger realm. Right. Now, I need to use three people. You're not going to sing, you're not going to say anything. You're not going to. Um, I just want to illustrate something. Kom toch asjeblief. Sy wil so graag iets doen. Jy gaan sing vanavond. <laughs> two more people. Any two. Kom jy opgaan. Sal my jylle twee. Oh, nog ene. Sorry, nog net ene. Nog net ene. You tell your neighbor, life is spiritual. Say to your neighbor, life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Yeah, that's the truth. Okay, so I want to introduce you three people. But now you need to focus. Because you actually only see one. Okay, so this one is you. Okay? But because you are three, there's three. You see? Don't get confused now. So, let's see. Who will this one be? Let's make this
Zeggen we weer? Oh. <laughs> okay, so this is your spirit man. So last night, we saw that when you become reborn, God says, I take my spirit and I put him inside of you. My spirit. God says, my spirit. I put him inside of you. And then the whole new creation happened. So the old is gone. And now your new spirit man was formed. This is spirit man. Oh, I'm a kind of spirit man. <laughs> this is soul. Your intellect, your thinking, your reasoning, your emotions. Everything happens here. This must have been a man. No, this was a good choice. Okay. Soul man. Spirit man, soul man. Are you keeping up? And then she wanted to be body. So she's body. Right. This is your legal entity in this world. This is the face on the ID. This is the face on the passport. This is the one that dresses up in the shops. This is the one that eats. This is the one that... is on earth <laughs> body now let's take a scenario remember they are one you come at home one afternoon and there's chaos um, let's say little pity fell out of the tree and broke his arm. Remember, it's a working together relationship because it's only one. So body comes home, sees with the physical eyes, hear all the screaming and must now react to what is happening after the observation took place. The physical body saw something. Thinking now starts. Who is thinking? <laughs> thinking now starts. Behind. Now thinking is saying, what do you see? And the eyes now communicates with thinking with the brain and saying, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so all this information comes now to thinking. Thinking must now make a decision. What to do with all this information that is coming? Are you living yourself inside your own lives? Because this is how it works. Based upon how strong this lad is, thinking is going to make a decision. Now, luckily for us tonight, this is a strong young man. <laughs> he has been made strong by the word of God and received a lot. That's why he is built strong. So he goes, reasoning is asking many questions and spirit man is saying, don't worry, relax. Don't worry, relax. Yes, but I see a broken arm. Then why? <laughs> Questions, decision making. You are sorted. Lay your hands on the sun. Pray over him so he can be whatever is happening in your heart at that moment. Either healed or calm or whatever is in your heart. Default setting. Miracle will happen if the three are aligned and you see one. If there is doubt, it's not working. If there is 
not enough word, it's not working. Only when there's alignment. So it's a working together relationship all the time, even as you are sitting here now. They are working together. It's my and your responsibility to line them up. Can you see how it's working? Thank you. Thank you, body. Thank you, soul. Thank you, spirit. Thank you.